Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about SAP modules, and then I will show you an example of how to use modules to record information in the ERP system. What is a SAP module? Last time I talked about this concept very simply. Today we'll discuss this in more details. A SAP module is a software that is designed specifically for a functionality in a business. For instance, every business needs accounting department, needs human resource management department, needs sales department. So for each department or for each functionality in the business, when we create a software in the ERP system, we call this software that is spe specifically designed for this functionality, a module. In a SAP ERP system, we have three core modules. They are accounting and finance module, human resource management module, logistics module, or supply chain management module. No matter what business you are operating, you need these three functionalities in your business to uh, maintain a regular business operation. So for each department or for each functionality, we create a software in the SAP system. And that software is called a, a SAP module. You could have heard people talk about a FICO module HRM module, SCM module. These are the core modules in SAP ERP system. FICO, let's talk about FICO. FI represents financial resource management. CO represents uh, the controlling and accounting management system. So FICO module is designed for the accounting finance management functionality or department for the business. HRM represents human resource management module. If you want to record the starting date of the employment, the ending date of employment, the insurance management for employees, you usually go to the HRM module to record all this information in a SAP ERP system. Logistics module is uh, the third core module in the SAP ERP system. Sometimes it's called a, a SCM module, Supply Chain Management module. In this module, we record information about sales, procurement, and uh, inventory transactions. Here we have a new word, procurement. What is it? A procurement is a process of purchasing the raw materials and then uh, storing them in the warehouse. So this is a simple process of procurement. We record all this information about sales, procurement, inventory, all information about the product flow in the company, in the logistics module. Now we have a lot of new concepts in business arena. For instance, we use social media to perform the marketing campaign. We use business intelligence to analyze the historical data in order to predict the future sales. We also use a lot of mobile technology in business operation. SAP has also considered all these new trends in business operation. Therefore, you can see a lot of new modules have been added in the SAP ERP system. For instance, the CRM module, the Customer Relation Management module, the BI module, Business Intelligence module, and of course, the, uh, another important module, Mobile Enterprise Solution or Mobility module. These are the new modules uh, in the SAP ERP system. In this class, we will use a lot of functions from the logistics module or supply chain management module. We will focus on the data entry in sales, 
procurement and inventory process. Now let me show you an example how to complete an information input and information management in the material procurement process. Let's say we want to purchase some raw materials for the U.S. branch of the Global Biking Corporation. We want to buy some uh, bottles and uh, uh, some bottle cages as raw materials for this company. We want to store these raw materials in the U.S. branch. This slide shows you a whole process of purchasing raw materials from very beginning to the very end. When we want to purchase some raw materials, we start with placing orders from uh, certain vendors. After we place the order, we'll record what kind of materials we placed in the SAP system, for which plants we ordered the, the raw materials in the SAP system. And then the vendor will send the raw materials to us. Next step is we want to check if they are the qualified uh, raw material, what is the quality, what is the quantity. And then we want to record this information as goes receipt for inventory in the SAP system. Next, when the vendor sends the receipt to us, we want to record the invoice information in the SAP system and then post the information in the accounting module or in the database for accounting department. We need to post the money we owed to the vendor in the account payable in the uh, accounting module. This is the process of purchasing the material and then record the information about the procurement in the SAP ERP system. Now let me show you how to implement the data entry and data record in the SAP ERP system. First, uh, we need to go to the SAP front end software. You can find it in the start menu. Click on SAP logon. Now we want to find the connection folder. For this class, we want to access to the web address Calcutta, C A L C U T T A. So double click on Calcutta. Now we are accessing to the SAP ERP central database. In the logon page, make sure to change the number for client from a 001 to 440. This is the client number for this class. And then type in the username I emailed to you. Next, we want to input the password. Uh, if you log on the system for the first time, once you type in the password I emailed you, the SAP ERP system will ask you uh, to change a new password. Please remember the password and keep it in a safe place. Before you type in the password, you can see some existing asterisks in the password box. This is the way that the SAP company try to protect the user's privacy. So you just ignore the asterisk in the password box and type in your password. After that, press the Enter key on your keyboard to enter the SAP system. We have uh, several areas in the system. The major one on the left is called the uh, Easy Access Menu. Remember this, Easy Access Menu. You can always double click or click on the little triangle next to each folder to find the functions to input data and analyze data. Another way is through the uh, comment box. For every SAP function, the SAP company gives a unique code. If you are very familiar to the SAP system, you will remember the code. So next time when you want to find the function, you don't have to go through every step in the easy access menu 
you can type in some code to access to the function. For instance, if you want to find the material management menu or material management function, you can type in a code mm, mm01. As you can see, you bring up the material management window and then you can type in some information. But in this class, we just get to know the SAP system. I don't expect you to remember all the comment codes. Just use the easy access menu to find the uh, data entry window. We also have several important buttons. The first one, the check sign in the upper left corner, is the enter button. After you give all the values to the boxes in a data, data entry process, click uh, the enter button to confirm the data entry. If you want to quit certain function, click uh, the exit button or the log off button. Or you can click uh, the cancel button with an uh, X on the top to cancel the data entry. Now let me show you an uh, example. We want to complete the material procurement process in the SAP system. The first step is to place the order. Click the little triangle next to logistics. Click materials management. Click purchasing. Click purchase order. Click create. And then double click vendor supplying plant known. Now we need to place the order and record the information about this new order in the purchase order data sheet. First step is to find from which vendor company we want to place the order. Click on the box next to the vendor option. Then you will see a button show up next to the box. Click on this button. A company could have several vendors. It could be a hassle to remember every vendor's code or every vendor's company name. SAP ERP has considered this factor. It provides the vendor searching function to the user. As you can see, on the top of this window, we have several tabs. For each tab, it provides a way of searching a vendor. There is no correct way or standard way of how to search a vendor. It completely depends on the user's personal preference. You can click on the left and the right a triangle to find the, the right tab of searching a vendor. I usually use the vendor by country and company code. So let's find the vendors by country and company code tab. In your system, if you cannot find uh, this option, click on the left or right triangle to find it. It's called the vendors by country slash company code. In this window, we want to find the vendor according to country and then find the vendor from the city list. You will see a download button. Click on it. In this case, we want to place the order. We want to purchase some raw materials from the vendor in uh, Houston, Texas. So in country code, let's find the US. You can scroll down the list and find the US. After select the US, click on the check sign. And then click uh, the check, check sign on the window searching a window. Now you will see a list of cities. Let's say we want to place the order from the window in Houston, Texas. So scroll down the list, find the H list. Let's say we want to place the order from vendor 556, the Space Bike Composites Company. Select the first uh, company in the H list, in the Houston list, and then click uh, the check sign. 
Now you can see the Windows code show up in the box. Last time when I introduced the SAP system to you, I said uh, we want to give every unit a unique ID number. So here you see the result. Instead of the company name, we can see a unique code for this specific vendor. It's always easier to manage numbers rather than manage company name in a data analysis system. So this is why we want to use the unique code to represent a unit in the SAP system. The unit can, can be a raw material, can be a vendor, can be one of our subsidiary de departments, and so on and so forth. Next, I want to fill out some information for this order. For instance, for which company we place the order, for which subsidiary plant we place this order, which purchase group is this subsidiary department is in, and so on and so forth. So we want to go to the purchase organization box. If you cannot find uh, these three boxes, you can click uh, this button to expand uh, the uh, window. Let's say we want to purchase the raw material for our US branch. So click the button and then choose US00 and then click uh, the check sign. Next, let's choose the purchase group. Click the button and then choose N00 to indicate this order is for the US branch. And then click uh, the check sign. Next, click uh, the company code and then click uh, the button. Let's choose US00 to indicate this is the order for the US branch. And then click uh, the check sign. Now we fill out all the information, the general information about the order. Next, we want to input some information about uh, the raw materials we want to buy. So go to the detail page. Again, if you cannot find uh, this window, click uh, the expand or collapse when button. So you can open and close the detail window. When you open the detail window, first click the material field and then click the button to search the raw material you want to purchase. Click on the button. Let's say we want to find some information about the material type. Again, if you cannot find the material by material type tab, click the left and right triangle to find it. You want to find the material by material type tab. Under this tab, in the first box, the material type, click the download button to find what are the currently available material types the company database has. Let's scroll down to HAVA, the trading goals and then click the check sign. Under each type, we could have a lot of uh, uh, raw materials, right? So we want to use uh, code to search the material we want to use. In this made up example, let's search the raw material with code 001. So type in uh, asterisk and then type in 001 in the material box. First, the uh, asterisk and then 001. Next, we want to click the search sign to find out all the materials with code 001 under the material type HAWA. So let's do this. We want to purchase some uh, bottles and uh, bottle cages. So click uh, the bottle first. Click a water bottle and then click uh, the check sign. So we select uh, the raw material. This is the first uh, raw material we want to buy. And type in some quantity. For instance, we want to buy 
uh, 30 of them. Next, you want to type in the price per product. Let's say it's $9 each. So type in 9 in the net price field. Also in currency, choose US dollar. If you cannot see the USD in the currency field, if you cannot see it, type in it. Type in USD. The last important information is for which subsidiary plant we want to order the raw material. So go to PLNT field, PLNT, and then click uh, the button to choose the plant from the list. Let's say we want to place the order for uh, the plant in Miami. So choose MI00 and then click uh, the check sign. Now we complete the data entry for the first order. Let's say we want to order something else. We also want to order some uh, bottle cages. In the material field, under BOTL1001, click the cell and then click the button next to it. Let's type in HAWA. This is the material type and then type in asterisk 001. By the way, all the uh, options are under material by material type tab. If you cannot find it, click uh, the left and uh, right uh, triangle to find uh, the tab. Then you will find all these materials. And then click uh, the check sign. Under this list, choose the water bottle cage and then click uh, the check sign again. Let's say we want to order 20 of them and it will be $5 each. So type in 5 in the net price field. Also, we place the order for the Miami plant. So click uh, on the sale under the PLNT field and then choose the button. Click uh, MI00 and then click uh, the check sign. So now we finish the data entry for the second order as well. We want to save these data entries. So click uh, the save button on the top of the ERP system. Now you will see uh, order ID number. So remember this order ID number. This number is at the bottom of the software. You can see standard PO created under the number. Your number in your system could be a little different from mine. Just to remember this number. We will use this number again when we uh, create the goals receipt when the raw materials arrives in our warehouse. So remember this number. At this moment, we have completed the data entries for orders. So we want to quit the uh, create purchase order window, just look, click on the exit button on the top. Click on it, then you'll, you will go, to, go back to the main menu. Next thing we want to do is to wait for the vendors to send the raw materials to our warehouse. When the raw materials arrives, we want to record the information about the uh, raw material received into the SAP system. We need to go to the inventory management menu. So now you can click uh, the little triangle next to purchasing to close the purchasing function. Next, you want to click on the triangle next to inventory management. We want to create the receipt for the raw materials when they arrive in our warehouse. Click on the triangle next to inventory management and then click uh, goals management and then click uh, on the little triangle next to goals receipt and then click uh, the little triangle next to for purchase order. 
and then double click on GR for purchase order, MIGO. Double click on this function. In the MIGO window, we want to record the information about the quality and the quantity of the raw materials received. In practice, when you want to uh, register the information of raw material received, you want to compare the information with the order information to see if you received the right raw materials, if they are qualified raw materials, right? So first of all, you need to find the order you just placed. How can you find the order? We use the order ID number. That's the number I ask you to remember. Make sure in the MIGO window, make sure the purchase order is selected, and then click the box next to it. And then you will see a button, purchase order button, show up next to the box. By using this button, we want to find the order ID. Click on the button. Again, you will see a lot of options on the top, a lot of uh, tabs. You can uh, use the way that you like to find the vendor information or order information. In practice, I usually use purchasing documents per vendor. If you cannot find this tab, click on the left and the right triangle to find this tab. We want to use purchasing document per vendor. And then click uh, the download button. In this button, in this window, we want to use the vendors by country company code. If you cannot find this tab, again, click on the left and the right triangle to find it. Use vendors by country forward slash company code. In the country box, type in US, and they are in uppercases, and then click uh, the check sign. Then you will see a list of cities. These are the cities where our vendors are. Because we place the order from the first company in Houston list. So choose Houston, the first company in Houston list. And then click the check sign. Then we will see the code for the vendor from which we place the order about our raw materials. Click the check sign again. Now you will see a lot of orders you placed from this window. Find the right one, and then click the check sign. In the future, when you place a lot of orders, you will have a lot of ID numbers in the list. Always find the right one, and then click the check sign. Now you see the uh, order ID show up in the box. Click uh, the check sign in the upper left corner. You will see the orders you placed. When you want to uh, register the information about the raw materials received, you want to check how many you received actually, uh, if they are qualified uh, raw materials. If everything is okay, click uh, the text, click the box under the OK field, and then type in the extra number of raw materials that you re you have received, and then find uh, the location to store in the raw material. Click on the uh, box under the SLOC field, and then click uh, the button next to it and find a place to store the raw material. Let's say we want to store both of the raw materials in the TGOO area. So type in TGOO and then click the check sign. Same thing to the uh, water bottle case. Let's store the raw material in the TGOO area too. After all of this, we have uh, finished the information entry for the raw materials that we have received and then click uh, the save button 
At the bottom of your system, you will see a new ID number. This ID number is for the uh, ghost receipt. So remember this ID number. We will use it uh, later today. Your number could be a little different uh, from mine. Uh, so remember the number show up at the bottom of your system. Now we can uh, exit this window. We finish the data entry for the ghost receipt. Now you can click on the little triangle next to inventory management to close this function. Next, we want to in, uh, record the information of invoice when the vendor sends the bill to us. Click on the little triangle next to logistics invoice verification and then click uh, uh, document entry and then double click on enter invoice first you, we want to record the invoice date just to choose the current date and next we want to type in some amount this is the amount we owed to the vendor. Let's say we want to uh, type in 470. And then uh, type in USD, US dollar. Under the tax amount, let's choose the way of calculating tax amount. In practice, you will choose the one you use in your company. For this example, let's choose uh, the input tax. The last step is we want to find uh, uh, for which order we pay for this, uh, uh, this amount. Make sure the purchase order is selected and then click the box next to it. Again, we want to search the number of order. Click on the button in next to the box. In this window, we want to find the order ID. You have several ways to search the information. Usually, I will choose the, by searching the window first, and then I will find the order ID under that window. So click the box next to window, and then click on the button next to it. Here you have several options to search the vendor again. Uh, I will choose the vendors by country company code. If you cannot find this tab, click on the left and right triangle to find it. Here in the country box, let's type in US. They are all in uppercases. And then click uh, the check sign. Then you will see the city list again. We ordered uh, the raw materials from the first vendor in the Houston list, right? So scroll down the window to Houston list, and then select the first vendor. Then click uh, the check sign. Now you can see the vendor ID, right? We want to find all the orders we placed with from this vendor. Then uh, make sure the vendor ID is in the box, and then click uh, the button in the upper left corner, it's called the uh, execute button. Remember, it's not the check sign, but uh, the execute button this time. So click on it, and then you will find uh, all orders you placed from this window. Find the right one, check the box, the latest order, and then click uh, the copy button. Now you can see the order ID show up in the uh, invoice entry window. Now click uh, the check sign in the upper left corner to load the information for this order. Make sure they are correct. Now you want to go back to look at the balance box in the upper right corner. Now you find out a 10 negative dollar. That means you have some error in the amount you give to the vendor. The money we owed 
is supposed to be four hundred eighty dollar, but uh, the amount in our invoice database is only four seventy. So we are ten dollars short. We need to change the number uh, in the amount box from four seventy to four eighty. Now click uh, the check sign again. Now you can see in the balance box, the balance is zero. This is the correct balance. So now we can save the invoice data. Now you can see another number at the bottom. This number will be the invoice number. So please remember this number too. Now we can exit the invoice data entry window. And then click uh, the little triangle next to logistics invoice verification. We complete this step too. The last step is to inform the accounting department to pay money to our vendor. So now we need to use the accounting module. Scroll down the window and find the accounting. And click uh, the little triangle next to accounting. Next, click on financial accounting. And then choose accounts payable. Under Accounts Payable, choose Document Entry. And then choose Outgoing Payment. And then double click on Post. In this window, first we want to choose today's date or current date. Next, make sure the company code is US00 and the currency is USD. If you cannot find the USD, type in USD in the box next to currency forward slash rate. And then type in the account number. You can give a number to this uh, payment. For instance, we type in 100. 0, 0, 0, 5, 0. and then type in the amount you are about to pay we want to pay 480 and then under the open item selection we want to type in the vendor's name or the vendor's ID again we can search the vendor ID so let's choose vendors by country forward slash company code and then type in US for the country box and then click the check sign. We want to pay to the vendor in the first position in the Houston list. So let's find the Houston list first. It will be the first vendor in the Houston list. So choose this company and then click the check sign. So after all of this, we want to click on the process open item. In this window, you want to double click on the order you placed. In our case, it's a $480, right? Double click on the $480 and then to make sure the not assigned amount is zero. You want to make sure this. If you don't double click on it, then you can find the not assigned amount is 480. So you want to double click on 480 to clear this amount. That means you assign this money to this transaction. And then click uh, the save button. Now you can see another number at show up at the bottom of the, of the system. This is the number for the uh, account payable transaction. So after this step, we can exit the window and click uh, yes. Now we complete a procurement process. So remember there are four major steps. First, you want to place the order. 
And then when the raw materials arrived at our warehouse, you want to enter the data about the quality and the quantity. And then you want to uh, record the information of the invoice when the vendor sends the bill to us. And next, we want to inform the accounting department to post the amount we owed to the vendor. So this is the example how we enter data in the SAP system. This concludes today's lecture. I will see you soon in the next one.